somewhat respectable. I, I might characterize you, Steve, to some extent, somewhat respectable. Steve Leisman joins us now with the latest read. At least. At least on the consumer and GDP uh, for the fourth quarter and beyond. Steve. Joe, thanks. Yeah, forecasters were encouraged by the Friday retail sales report, and they see better fourth quarter growth ahead after that disappointing third quarter. Uh, here's the latest CNBC rapid update shows the average third quarter forecast at 2.9 percent. It would have been worse without that September retail beat, but down, we'll remember, from the 7.3 percent and the huge optimism at the beginning of the quarter where we thought the economy was reopening. It was dragged down by the surge in COVID. Fourth quarter forecast to see the resumption of the economic rebound and growth stays above trend through the second half of next year, 4.9 and 3.8. Conrad de Quadros of Breen Capital says the consumer's in good shape. Household wealth is at record levels. Wages are picking up. Income growth is strong. There are lots of available jobs and there is significant accumulated excess savings. For the year in the CNBC rapid update, forecasters see 5.6% growth and above trend 4% in 2022. And then it returns to around the 2% level in 2023, but not shown there. Because consumer balance sheets are in good shape, inflation not seen as the biggest problem, at least for now, and at least at current levels. Stephen Stanley from Amherst Pierpont told me over the weekend, the bigger issue is going to be keeping the economy open and being able to make enough products and services available. Stanley, along with other forecasters, says his forecast is based on there not being another COVID surge that shuts the economy down again. And meanwhile, this just in really, the market continues to bring forward the forecast for the first Fed rate hike. Here are the latest probabilities. I'm seeing for the first time a greater than 50 percent probability of a July rate hike. This has moved from December to September to now. We're talking about a summer hike. Comes along with the surge in the two-year yield this morning to around 44 basis points. That's the highest since March 2020. Joe, you remember that's when the Fed was cutting rates, and now they're back up 44. <clears throat> Steve, it's a complicated world, and, and uh, so many times the Fed is, is faced with, uh, you know, things that are conflicting with, with what they're trying to do. And, and I, I think here we are again. So you've got a supply bottleneck, which could hurt growth globally. So you, they might want to stay easy, but then that just fuels the fire for the demand for the things that are bottlenecked. So then you got the problem with, with you know, really making it, exacerbating it, with, and then inflationary fears come. So they're damned if they do again and damned if they don't. So I don't know why Jay Powell even wants that job. <clears throat> I think he does, Joe. But, you know, it's even more complicated than that. If you think about it, Inflation is sort of a potential cure for the supply bottlenecks. You raise prices, you should have an impact on demand, and that demand could help ease some of the bottlenecks. So um, th there are those, Joe, who thinks that the Fed is working at cross purposes with the bottleneck. The idea would be not to keep policy easy, not necessarily to tighten it, but maybe to ease back on the stimulus and, and keep things more, you know, uh, back towards a no more normal level. If consumers didn't have as much money as they have from the stimulus, they wouldn't be able to sort of overlook and, and just really power through or purchase through uh, these latest inflation numbers. But I was kind of surprised. I probably talked to three or four guys over the weekend along with their forecasts, and they were saying, we're not worried about the inflation issue here because of the savings rate and because of what's going on in the jobs market right now.